Greetings, fellow learners. In this video, we are going to look at RCNNs, the what, the why, and the how. So what is an RCNN? It is a method of object detection that uses region proposals and extracts features using a convolution neural network. Now, there's a lot of components over here, so let's go through each of them, starting with object detection. What is it? So we take an image, then we localize the object of interest, and we classify the object of interest. That's object detection. So how do we do this? In 2014, there was a new method that came out that was RCNNs. So the way that it works is that we take an image, we will then create region proposals, these bounding boxes where objects of interest may be present. For each of these region proposals, we are then going to pass it into a CNN architecture. This can be used to extract features. And then from these extracted features, we can then pass it through SVMs to classify what object is present in each of these regions over here. And then this will allow us to take the image, create bounding boxes, and label the object of interest in each bounding box. And hence the op output is an object detection. So there are three distinct phases here that we'll go through for the rest of this video, adding some detail on training and inference. So let's start with stage one, which is region proposal generation. So what is a region proposal? Now, if we have an image, they are the candidate bounding boxes where an object of interest may be present. Each of these orange boxes is a region proposal. Now, why do we have these region proposals? Well, back in the 90s and early 2000s, object detection was done using a sliding window approach. So if we take an image and we'll just take like this sliver, this red box over here, we perform some feature extraction to get like a vector that represents this box and we classify it. Let's say that this is a SVM classifier that classifies whether it's a tiger or not tiger and we get like 0 0.08. So this represents the probability that this red square contains a tiger. Then what we would do is we would need to slide this window pixel by pixel across the entire image. And the problem with this approach is that this can be expensive when we're extracting this and perform this classification many times. So to deal with this, what we do is that we use region proposals. They became popular in the 2010s. And the way it works is that for the input image, we create roughly 2000 candidate region proposals. That is places where an object may be present. Then we will extract features and perform the classification only 2000 times. That is the number of region proposals that exist. And this was great because with the rise of the internet, there were much higher quality images, much larger data sets, and this could scale well with training. Now, how exactly we do and create these like region proposals, I'm gonna defer you to a previous video that I had made where we walked through a very specific region proposal algorithm known as selective search. But for the purposes of this video, all you really need to know is kind of what they are and somewhat like why they exist. So now that we've taken an input image and we've converted it or we've added these 2000 bounding boxes where an object of interest may be present, each of them being a region proposal, let's now walk through feature extraction with a convolution neural network. So, what is feature extraction? We take an input image and feature extraction is going to essentially extract some important information or features from this complex input 2D signal, that is the image. And the output is just going to be some vector representation of either the entire image or just a part of this image. 
Now, how it was done before in like the 90s, it was done using something called wavelets. In the 2000s, we used a histogram of gradients, typically. But the problem with these older approaches is that these are handcraft features. And these handcraft features are actually very difficult to define for very complex signals like images. And so, how do we solve this? Well, in 2012, AlexNet showed state-of-the-art results for object recognition using a large data set. And so this is like the architecture for AlexNet. And object recognition specifically is the problem of taking an input image and then determining what the entirety of this image is, like it's a dog or something else. Now, this neural network showed state-of-the-art performance for object recognition, but can we use somehow this CNN in object detection? And how we do this is, well, the answer kind of lies in how we can somehow link object recognition to the problem of object detection. Now, one of the biggest hurdles here is that with object recognition, by the 2010s, we had a lot of training data, especially due to the rise of large data sets like ImageNet. Object detection, on the other hand, had much more scarce training data, that is training data of images with bounding boxes and labeled objects. Now, because of this scarcity, if we were to just like from scratch, train an AlexNet-like architecture, on object detection, we might end up with a network that just has way too many parameters for the very scarce data that we have, and hence the network might likely perform very poorly on inference time. So how do we solve this problem? Now, the technique that was proposed during this was using supervised pre-training and fine tuning, something that we use more commonly as well as a paradigm today. So the way that it worked here was that we would first pre-train AlexNet on object recognition. So this is kind of the original 2012 implementation of AlexNet where we take an input image. We now have this initialized network with like random weights or some curated random weights. And we will then train it on, you know, a certain label like, oh, we want to recognize a dog or we rec want to recognize a person or an airplane or any one of like 1,000 object categories. And so we have effectively pre-trained now this network. Now, next what we can do is we can create a data set. And this is to fine tune AlexNet on the warped region proposals. So what this means is that now from our very scarce object detection label data set, we will take the image we will then pass it through a region proposal algorithm, and we will extract like 2000 bounding box features. You can imagine that each one of these boxes is like an object of interest. Next, what we will do is we will also consider the labeled bounding box from you know the same image. We know that this is going to be labeled as a cat. So we compare this bounding box along with you know, one region proposal from here. Let's say that we take the solid lined rectangle over here, and that's gonna be the region proposal for comparison. We compare both of them and see if there's an overlap that's greater than 50%. And when I say overlap, I mean like the intersection over union. And if this is greater than 50%, then it means that, you know, this little region proposal actually does have good enough, you know, characteristics to re actually represent the cat. And so what we will do is we will warp this region proposal that is basically stretch the region proposal that is this like rectangle over here into a 24, 224 across 224 image. And we do it of like 224 across 224 because that is the input configuration required for AlexNet. And then we just use the label which we have from our scarce training set. So we have an input, we have an output, and this is good for a supervised fine tuning of AlexNet on this new domain of warped region proposals. 
And in this way, this is like one sample in the data set, we can do this for every single, you know, region proposal here. Check if it actually represents, you know, the object of interest. If it does, we add it to our data set. If it doesn't, just keep looking through the next region proposals and the next images. And so we can create our data set. Now, the next step is to fine tune AlexNet on object recognition of the new domain of warped proposals. So we have our pre-trained AlexNet architecture and we will replace the output layer that had like 1000 dimensional you know, vector with let's say just 20 dimensions, which could include the number of objects that we want to detect. And these weights over here are now going to be randomly initialized. And so now what we can do is pass our, we have our new data set, so we pass this you know, input, we can train it on this output over here, and we can train the network with like back propagation to update, learn these weights, and fine tune the rest of the weights in the network. So we have multiple like warped regions in this way. And once this is done, we'll have this new network now that is fine tuned to take in these warped region proposals. Now, once that's all done, we can now use this for inference to extract features. So what we can do is we take an input image. We can then create 2000 bounding boxes, each bounding box being a region proposal. And for each region proposal over here, we are going to warp it to 224 cross 224. This will make it compatible to input to AlexNet. And when we have this like fine tuned AlexNet, we will pass it in here and it is going to give us like some outputs, but we don't really care about that output. What we do care about is this layer over here, which is going to give, it's going to be like a 4,096 4 dimensional vector. And this will represent the features that are extracted from this warped region. And so effectively, we represent this warped region with 4,096 dimensional vector. And what we can do now is repeat this for 2,000, all the 2,000 region proposals. And we now can represent the input image with 2,000 vectors, each vector being 4,096 dimensions. And so we have extracted features with a convolution neural network which ends stage two. Next for stage three is that we are going to use a support vector machine or multiple of those to classify each object as being, you know, a specific case, an airplane, a person, a TV monitor, or anything else. Now from the previous stage two, we were able to take an image and extract features from it. And each of these represents the features for a region proposal. Now what we need to do is we need to train these like SVM classifiers. So, and we can do this so using the data set that we created for fine tuning AlexNet. For every region proposal, we know that, you know, what the label could be. So in this case, let's say this is a dog classifier. We know that, it, let's say this is a dog. Um, it's not an airplane and it's not a person. So we can use this, all of this information to train these classifiers. And there are as many SVMs as object categories. So let's say that there's like 20 of these SVM classifiers here. Now, once all of these SVMs are completely trained, what we can do now is take an input image and we perform feature extraction and, you know, for all of these like region proposals. So we'll have 2000 of these vectors, each of case like 4096 dimensions. And for each of these region proposal vectors, we're gonna pass it into all 20 of our SVMs. And we'll get like a probability that each of the, like this region proposal is like a dog or an airplane or a person and so on. Then what we do is we just look at the largest, you know, prediction. So this region proposal likely represents a dog is what we're saying. And we're going to store this. So in this way, we determine the largest prediction class and store it with the region proposal. So we do it for all of these region proposals and we do it for like this entire image. And so what we're gonna get eventually is this an image 
with 2,000 region proposals, each of which has been labeled with, let's say, some ca object category, along with like what is the SVM prediction value. Now what we can do is use something called like non-maximum suppression, which is basically sorting all of these SVM predictions in descending order. And then we will remove the bounding boxes, which have, you know, very significant overlap with previous more high priority bounding boxes. And when you do this, you should eventually get a situation where we have one bounding box per object category. In this case, there's only like one image, one like object, which is a dog that's classified with, you know, this is the SVM prediction. And so we have been effectively, we were able to do object detection on the input image. And so I hope this entire pipeline makes sense. Quiz time. Have you been paying attention? Let's quiz you to find out. Why prefer RCNN over sliding window approaches for object detection? A, region proposals drastically reduce the number of regions compared to sliding window approaches. B, CNNs work well when data is scarce. C, features from the region proposals are more discriminative than handcraft features using sliding windows. Or D, SVM classification is used in the RCNN architecture. I'll give you a few seconds to answer this question. The correct option is A and C. Did you get them right? Please comment your reasoning down in the comments below and let's have a discussion. And if you think I do deserve it, please do consider giving this video a like because it will help me out a lot. Now that's gonna do it for quiz time, but before we go, let's generate a summary. In this video, we talked about what, why, and how of RCNNs. So RCNN is a method of object detection that uses region proposals to extract features using convolution neural networks. And we can break this down into three phases where we first take an input we then generate some region proposals over here. We will then warp each region proposal to pass it through an AlexNet-like convolution architecture. We then extract features, or these are like embeddings for each region proposal. And we will then classify them as being either an airplane, person, TV monitor, or any other object of interest. And we will remove overlapping bounding boxes. And in the end, we will get this, which is essentially an object detection case where we have an image with a bounding box around objects of interest that are labeled appropriately. And through this video, we saw how each of these steps is actually done. And if they have models, how they are trained, how the data is collected, and how inference is done as well as a whole. Now, that's all I have for today. And like I mentioned before, if you do like this video, please do consider giving this video a like. I'll put resources to extend reads and papers down in the description below, so do check it out. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.